A shift in the track of the overnight guidance with the potential Caribbean hurricane may have implications for many people in the path of the storm. We're going to take a look at all of that. Plus, today is an all-hazards severe weather day for parts of the United States with the threat of tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds. And the atmospheric river is returning. A lot of rain is coming and stormy conditions will prevail across the lower 48 over the next couple of weeks. We're going to take a look at who will be impacted by that as well. And we'll have the rest of your weekend forecast. Good morning, folks. Welcome into the channel. Hope you are doing well. Jason is my name. I'm glad you're here and got a lot to get into. We're going to start here in the Atlantic and we're looking at this big wave right here. We've got a couple of areas of interest out here. One is that wave. One is this big swirl up here. Possibly could gain some subtropical characteristics, but we're not really looking at any implications as a result of that. Maybe it steals a name. Maybe it doesn't. But this one is likely to as it gets into the Caribbean heads on in here over the next few days and we are going to watch and see how the models develop that. The models have been showing quite a bit of development across the board here in the Caribbean, but uh, now we've got a little bit of a change in some of the guidance overnight. Here is the GFS and the GFS does some wonky things from time to time and today is no different. Look what it does. Instead of one storm, now it has two storms down here. We're about four days out, folks. We're going to roll this on along here, get out to day five and six. This puts us toward the end of next week, Friday the 24th, and we have a double barrel hurricane threat out here. One bothering Central America, Nicaragua down here into Costa Rica, and another one up here over the DR in Haiti and interfering with weather plans that you might have next weekend here in the Caribbean around Puerto Rico and some of the islands as well. And the GFS just rolls these hurricanes along, strengthens them both, and uh, sort of rotates them around each other, and then one follows the other right out. One heads on out toward east of Bermuda into the North Atlantic by the time we get on out into the end of October the 31st, and the other one just rakes uh, the DR and uh, Haiti here. Boy, this would be a very bad situation to have two hurricanes pass over the same area, folks. I don't think this is likely to happen. Two hurricanes developing in that close proximity to each other down here in the Caribbean, but we have warm waters, we have a lower shear environment, so it is possible that we at least have a storm develop and uh, where it moves is up in the air, but the GFS has been pretty resolute in showing whatever develops head out to the north and to the east eventually and not really bother anybody. The European, on the other hand, has had a number of different solutions and we're gonna roll this forward and look what happens. We get a little low pressure signal down here in the central Caribbean, we get on out toward the early part of next week and then our wave gets in here and really starts to uh, meander around in the central portion of the Caribbean and we really don't see a defined center on the European anymore. It's tracking it so far to the south, the land mass is interfering with development now. And look at this, as we get on out into day seven and uh, day eight, day nine, day 10. Day 10 is October the 28th. Uh, that is, uh, would be next Monday evening, folks, or Monday evening a week from this coming Monday. And we still don't have a storm now. Yesterday, the European was really robust in developing this thing, but it has gotten down here into the uh, Central America area and it's just meandering around down here uh, uh, around the landmass, and that is not good for tropical development. That would be a lot of rain for you all in Central America, but there would be no hurricane if the European model is right, at least through the next two weeks. So the European has shifted the track farther south. This would certainly be good news for the Northern Islands and up into Cuba, but it would not be great news for Central America. You folks could get be dealing with a whole lot of rain and some squalls down here. What does the European ensemble show? Well, out here at day 10, I've rolled this out already, and you can see the clustering. We have a few less L's than yesterday, but look at this. All the clustering is right around here towards Central America. Only a couple take it out early on into the islands, folks. And so some of the guidance is shifting in this direction. The Google DeepMind is essentially the same way. Look at this. Get over here to the Google DeepMind. It's doing the same thing. It's putting a lot of its eggs in the Central America landfall basket now. So we could have a situation where this thing tracks on in and really doesn't become all that strong of a hurricane, or it could stay just offshore and develop and become a strong hurricane and then track into Central America as a strong, uh, a tro a strong tropical system, folks. So we've got a lot to watch out here over the next 10 days to two weeks. The Good news is that no, there are no threats to the United States on any of these models. So that is what we're happy about, at least here in the lower 48 folks in the 
uh, Caribbean, definitely a different story here. Here is the official uh, Hurricane Center map, and you can see a 30% chance of development still the same as it was yesterday with this wave moving into the Caribbean. And there is 10% chance of a subtropical storm developing up here with that big swirl. So that's what's going on out in the Caribbean. A lot to watch, folks, but some of the guidance is starting to shift this a little bit farther south and a little bit farther to the west, interacting with land and keeping our system quite weak and uh, not developing maybe at all. So we're going to watch uh, how those trends play out over the next several days. And in the meantime, we've got to watch what's happening over the lower 48 today, particularly in the South Central Plains area around Arkansas and then up into the Ohio Valley overnight tonight. Got some severe weather to talk about. We're going to look at that right now. We've got a pretty big severe weather day shaping up across the south central plains into the lower Mississippi Valley, even up into the Ohio Valley as we head through the evening and overnight hours. Low pressure is taking shape out here in the plains. A lot of energy in the atmosphere and the low levels creating wind energy and shear aloft will help to fuel thunderstorms in the form of supercells, line segments, clusters, and eventually pushing everything into a QLCS as we go into the overnight hours and send a line through the Tennessee Valley up into the northeast as we head through the day tomorrow. Got a slight risk here from Springfield back just west of or east of Dallas rather north of Luff Lufkin into Shreveport, Jackson, Mississippi, Jackson, Tennessee, and then really from just south of Detroit all the way back down into south central uh, Texas here back over into the panhandle of Florida even across the Gulf Coast states. We're looking at a possible uh, isolated severe thunderstorm event in those areas, folks. And so that's what we've got. We've got tornadoes, definitely a possibility centered around Arkansas and just areas around that. We're going to see supercells develop, a lot of shear in the atmosphere, low-level jet working in, certainly going to have some spin uh, it, kind of big time here. Fortunately, we don't have a tremendous amount of instability. That's the saving grace here, folks. But Definitely a tornado threat this afternoon. Eventually, we're going to see line segments and some spin within those line segments could produce tornadoes too. Uh, wind is a big threat as well. Hail is a big threat too, particularly on the west side of our severe weather threat for today. Tomorrow, the threat shifts up here into the Ohio Valley from uh, Rochester down into just north of Raleigh-Durham back over toward uh, Columbus, Ohio. Isolated wind looking uh, at the predominant threat up here. Tornadoes are definitely possible across the southern area of the threat zone, looking at the Florida Panhandle, um, down here toward Mobile, Alabama, and Jackson, or not Jackson, but um, uh, just east of New Orleans and uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. That's what I was trying to think of. There's a tornado threat for tomorrow. Wind is a threat. Hail is not much of a threat tomorrow, so not as big of a threat tomorrow, but still we've got some uh, spin in the atmosphere, a lot of shear to work with. We just don't have very much in the way of instability, which is great news. But here is the low-level wind map, and you can see as we roll through the day today, look at these orange colors. That's we're up here at 850 uh, millibars, about a mile up off the ground. Look at this. Get on here toward the evening hours. Look at the bright colors and the brown showing up. We're going to see that low-level jet strengthen. That's going to strengthen our tornado threat a bit. And then as the second piece of energy kind of merges with our primary short wave, get a big low pressure to develop and move up into Canada through the evening hours uh, tomorrow, folks. So got a big dynamic system playing in here, a lot of wind energy and the low levels and kind of how this all breaks down looking this morning, looking at showers and thunderstorms breaking out across Missouri over into Kansas and Oklahoma quickly. As the day goes on, we get into about two o'clock. We've got a lot of thunderstorms already breaking out from Oklahoma back into Missouri, just getting into Arkansas, southern half of Illinois, another piece of energy diving in that will meet up with our primary short wave here over the south central plains. And uh, as we get into the overnight hours and help to form a low pressure, you can already see that low pressure developing with some uh, rain kind of wrapping back around it. There is uh, eventually what happens. You get these supercells, they develop into clusters, and eventually the shear helps to organize things into a line segment. That's what we expect. So ongoing thunderstorms through Arkansas as we get into the at late afternoon hours. We start to push at 8 o'clock East Coast time, and we get to eastern Arkansas into the pictures, northern Louisiana, down here around Shreveport, and then up here into the southern half of Illinois, working into Indiana as well, looking at thunderstorms moving in. And then eventually a line segment takes shape, and blasts through Mississippi, heads toward Alabama, gets into central Tennessee as we work into the late overnight hours. Worst of the weather up here in Michigan looks to come in about three to six o'clock in the morning and then move on through with some just some heavy rain and uh, initially and some light rain after that. And eventually as we get on into tomorrow afternoon, get a little bit of heating and you'll see that squall line fire back up, although we're not looking at a severe 
wind event along with it today just because or on Sunday because we're not seeing a lot of instability there and then the line will fall apart toward the south especially as we get on down here to the lower parts of the southeast we just don't have a lot of moisture and all the dynamics are up here in Canada by this time and so that's what we're looking at in terms of uh, just having a thin line of showers maybe a little bit of um, scattered rain move through North Carolina through the Oh, late afternoon and evening hours tomorrow, but uh, up here toward um, the northern northeast area, New England, you're going to see plenty of rain through the evening hours tomorrow, heading on into Monday morning. As you head out the door, you're going to see a lot of uh, rain falling up here in Massachusetts and um, places like that. Eastern New York State heading into Vermont and New Hampshire through the day and that'll spread into Maine in the overnight hours and exit stage right by the time you wake up on Tuesday but another system hot on its heels coming through the Great Lakes bringing you all some showery weather and more energy coming into the west coast. We're going to take a look at that in a minute because we've got an active two-week pattern and storm system just crashing into the west coast. We're going to bring heavy rain out there. We're going to look at that right now. The atmospheric river is back and the weather is just variable as it can be this time of year, folks. But in this case, we've got an active two-week pattern coming up. That's why you subscribe. Subscribe into the channel and like the content. Leave a comment. If there's anything I can be in prayer about, please put it in the comment section. But look at this. It's kind of getting fast and wonky here, but you can just see these precipitable waters and the wave breaking here that happens as uh, these low pressure areas, the counterclockwise spin around those. You can see the moisture wrapping around and just crashing into Canada and into the Northwest. United States. What does that mean? Well, there's just storm after storm after storm working in here, bringing a lot of moisture in, and that's going to mean some heavy rain totals for this part of the world. We're looking at upwards of six to eight inches in some of the mountainous areas out here, the Cascades, the Olympics, and down into the Sierra Nevadas, the northern parts of that anyway, uh, but uh, certainly a lot of rain in the valleys as well. That extends all the way into western Montana, even into Wyoming here in the Rockies. So we're looking at a lot of rain. We've needed quite a bit of rain out here. We've been very, very dry so this is good news though we don't need it this much in a hurry so hopefully we can spread this out a bit but that will send storm after storm across the lower 48 and we'll have a chance of as those storms kind of move across the northern tier winding up and potentially looking at uh uh, some severe weather again returning back into parts of the U.S. We're going to keep an eye on that in the meantime we'll see one warm shot followed by a cold shot or a cool shot, followed by a warm shot, followed by a cool shot, followed by a warm shot. You get the picture here, folks? This is what's going on. Look at this big um, big bomb that develops here in the, uh, the European toward the end of the run. It's probably not going to happen that way, but it sends a massive squall line through North Carolina and then up into the Great Lakes, a big strong strengthening low pressure system with a lot of rain, a lot of wind, very dynamic system, big uh, cool air bomb kind of on the back side of that. And it, it gives everybody in the east a taste of fall, but uh, you can see here from this image that we're expecting other models. This is one operational run, of course, but other models are showing this too. The ensembles agree that it's going to be a very active pattern, and we're going to see cool shots and warm, you know, followed by warm ups, followed by cool shots. That's how it's going to work out over the next couple of weeks. Here is 10 day. Uh, the sorry the day 10 6 to 10 day temperature outlook that's what i'm trying to say spit it out jason october the 23rd through the 27th much of uh, the in internal portion of the country here looks to be above normal during this time period. It's when we're seeing the apex of that ridge kind of move through. Kind of got a low signal here and where cold rain lives in our neck of the woods over here in the east and then near normal out west mixed in Hawaii or Alaska. And of course, uh, warm, warmer than normal down in Hawaii. There's a big signal here for lots of rain piling up along the west coast. And you can see that here indicated in the six to 10 day outlook with above normal anomalies extending through the mid, much of the nation's midsection here in the South Central Plains. And there we have uh, below normal out east, which is expected as these systems kind of dart to the north and to the east, take all the dynamics up there. And there's a mixed signal for Alaska above in Hawaii as well. And finally, we'll wrap things up with space weather just because we have geomagnetic storm conditions yet again. We're minor geomagnetic storm conditions, G1. So we're not really looking at a whole lot. That coronal hole is turning away from us now, but the enhanced wind stream will hit us over the next couple of days and keep us in minor geomagnetic storm conditions. And of course, there is your aurora forecast looking at the a little bit of a decent likelihood of aurora over here in uh, at least parts of Alaska and the uh, northwestern province of Kansas, uh, Canada. And the view line would be south across the northern tier. So if it's clear, 
you might get a glimpse of it here in the, the northwest potentially. So just wanted to point that out to you folks. And that is it for the rest of the day. And that is the show. And we'll keep you posted on that severe weather. If anything changes, I'll let you know what's going on over the next uh, 24 hours or so on X. You can follow me there at Real Cold Rain. Otherwise, I'll be back again soon with another episode of Cold Rain's Weather World. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.